What's going on everybody? Plama Therapist here and today in part five's video, we're gonna go through our first actual paint session. Now up until now, we've just been practicing on some plastic we've had lying around, maybe some runner tabs or maybe some spoons if he picks them up. Today's the real deal. We're gonna go into our first painting session and I'm gonna take you guys from setup all the way to breakdown and everything in between. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too. So without further ado, let's head over to my paint station. So the first step of a paint session isn't actually to paint it, it's actually to wash our kits. Now, the reason we're washing our kit is not because of any mold release agent or anything. It's actually to get rid of all of the finger oils that we may have built up on our kits when we're snapping it out, sanding it down, and putting it all together. So we want to make sure that we break down our kit and go ahead and give it a thorough wash to remove our oils from our hands, but also any debris or maybe any um, sanding dust that may have built up as well. Now, chances are if you're at this point in your project, you already have a kit in mind that you want to paint. Or if you don't, maybe you just want to follow along with us. If that's the case, make sure you grab a kit that maybe you don't mind practicing on or you don't mind fooling around with a little bit so you can kind of get the feel of going through an actual paint session. Now, for me today, I'm going to be using the Legend Gundam that was sent over to me by the Gundam Play Store. I went ahead and cut him out, snapped him up, and sanded him down so he's all ready to go for a paint session. If your kit is snapped together, you can go ahead and take it apart now so that we can make sure we wash every individual piece. You can use tools like this to get the piece started and then break it apart with your fingers. The next step is to wash our kit. And the first thing we wanna do is make sure we don't lose any pieces down the drain. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a bowl and a colander so we can be sure to strain out our pieces as we wash them. After we add our pieces, the next step is to add warm water. Be sure to use warm water to start cutting through some of the finger oils that are left behind on the piece, but be sure to avoid using hot water as that can warp some of the small and thinner pieces that are in our kits. For some additional washing powder, you can go ahead and add some dish detergent or dish soap, and then go ahead and agitate your pieces a little bit to get those suds forming. Once you do, you can go ahead and pick up your pieces and shake them around in the colander to kind of give them a wash and continue to agitate the pieces to be sure that you get all those pieces nice and soaked. Once that's done, go ahead and give them a nice rinse over your bowl. This way, in case any pieces fall out, they fall into the bowl and not into the sink. After that, give your pieces a light shake out into a container and then go ahead and check your bowl for any missing or loose pieces. If you prefer something a little less risky, an ultrasonic cleaner is a great option. I'll go ahead and link something below for you guys to check out. With the pieces in our container now, we can go ahead and dab off any excess moisture that's sitting on top, and then we'll leave it out to dry off on its own. All right, so I'm back the next day. I let the pieces dry overnight so that I can make sure that all the water gets out. Now, if you don't want to wait overnight or you want to get moving on a little bit quickly, you can go ahead and dry the pieces yourselves. You can either use a paper towel to wipe everything down. I definitely recommend gloves, but if you don't have any, what you can do is you can wrap one piece with a paper towel and then wipe it off with another piece of paper towel. That way you don't put any new fingerprints back on your now clean pieces. Once the pieces dry, the next step is to put our pieces on our skewers or on our clips. Now this part is fairly straightforward. We're just gonna be clipping our pieces onto um, our clips or onto the skewers just like that. Now, the big thing that you wanna do is when you clip your pieces together is you wanna make sure that we remove any residue that's left on, whether it be water or even soap residue sometimes. And then we wanna make sure that we group our pieces by color. So as you can see here, uh, reds are gonna be with the reds, the grays are gonna be with the grays. And then eventually what you'll see is I'll put the blue pieces with the blue pieces. That's gonna become important later on down the road. So let's go ahead and jump ahead to some other tips and tricks I can give to you about skewering pieces. Now, if you have a piece that's a little too big for the skewer and it just seems to be falling down just like that, you can add a little bit of tape to give the skewer some added dimensions to it so that when you go ahead and put that piece on, it's going to stay properly and won't fall off when you give it a good shake. Conversely, if your skewer is too thick, what you can go ahead and do is just shave off a little bit on the end so that the piece just fits into one of the grooves or one of the areas you're trying to get it into. And then make sure that you shave off just enough that it still holds, but not too much that it falls off with a good shake. For tiny little pieces like this, what you can do is attach some fun tack to a skewer and then attach the piece onto the skewer like that. So we got all of our pieces ready here to begin painting. Now, I just wanna kinda of show you guys the setup so you guys can kind of prepare yourselves the same way. So on the right side here, because I'm left-handed, are the pieces that I'm gonna grab when I spray paint. So I'll start here, I'll pull one out as I start spray painting it here, 
And then when I'm done, I'll go ahead and put it in a block on this side over here, just like that. So I'll go ahead, put the camera up, and we'll go ahead and get ready to start painting. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of walk you guys through it um, piece by piece, just to kind of show you how I transfer from this block here over to the other block over there, the drying block. And so um, I use the smaller block here just because I don't mind if the pieces touch, but I use the bigger block over here for the drying pieces just to make sure that they don't touch when I put them in the blocks. So I'll get set up and then I'll walk you guys through the process. Now, as I just mentioned, um, when it comes to painting pieces, it's not important that the pieces touch before you paint them, but it's very important that they don't touch after you're done putting your paint down. So what I like to do when I'm painting is I always start with the first piece in the furthest back corner away from me, and then I'll build out my pieces closer to me as I go forward. So um, I'll start from the furthest back left corner because that's the furthest away from me, and then I'll slowly kind of build out around the edges and then come in towards the middle. This way I make sure that no matter what happens when I start putting my pieces is down it's the least likely chance for me to touch them because if I'm trying to cross over pieces to put my pieces down on the block there's a chance that I could bump them or move them and worst case scenario I may knock it off the skewer or the clip and then it falls onto the table and I have to redo that piece so make sure when you're spraying your paints and your pieces that as you start to put them into the block you start from the furthest point away from you and then slowly move in closer to you when you're done all right, so we just finished our paint session here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave these to cure overnight. Um, my preference is 24 hours, but if you're painting in the morning and you wanna come back at night, you guys can paint about six to eight hours after it's cure um, if you're using lacquers. Now, if you're using acrylics, they can be ready sooner, but I still recommend giving them a few hours to properly cure and stick to the plastic. Now, I'm gonna let these cure overnight, then we're gonna come back tomorrow and go ahead and paint these all. Don't forget when you guys are done painting for the day, you clean out your airbrush. If you missed that video, go ahead and leave that in the corner for you guys so you can check it out and be sure to follow along with the cleaning steps of your airbrush and to maintain your compressor as well. That's it for tonight, guys. I'll catch you guys tomorrow when we go ahead and put paint down on these pieces. All right, we're back. And there's two more things that I wanna show you guys today. First one is gonna be what I do when I paint my pieces. I'll show you guys where I start and kind of how I go about painting my pieces. And then I'm gonna show you guys what I do when I wanna switch from one color to the next, when I'm doing multiple colors in the same paint session. So let me go ahead and get my compressor set up and we'll go ahead and get started. Now, if you're just getting started for the first time and you kind of want to warm up, what I like to do is I like to take a piece that's usually kind of hidden and I'll go ahead and get started very lightly with light coats like this. This way, if there's any issues with my airbrush, my paint or whatnot, I can catch it on before I move on to the more important pieces, such as like the feet or the main torso. So I'll test it on this piece here. This one's tucked up into the arm so you don't normally see it. If there was any issues with it, it's easier to clean this up versus something like the main torso or the feet. So. Start with a small piece that's kind of hidden and then just make sure everything's working fine and then you can move on to the bigger pieces. So I'm gonna explain what I kind of do here on the foot. And first thing I do is I like to start off by catching all the edges because what that helps me to do is it helps me to find any nooks and crannies that I might miss later on. Um, I don't know how many times I've painted a piece and then looked at it and realized I completely missed the part. And so to try to correct that after all the pieces have been painted up, it's a little bit hard. So what I'll do is I'll try to make sure I catch all the nooks and crannies before going over it with that wet coat. Once I do that, I'll start to hit some of the outsides before I kind of come in to do like the full wet coats on everything else. So as you can see, I hit the sides of the foot here before going in and undoing the bottom. I'm pretending this is like a regular piece, like a shoulder or something like that. So I'll hit the sides and then I'll hit the main part of it. And then what I'll do is I'll come back over it and just make sure I catch every little nook and cranny, make sure I get it all nice and red. Once that's done, then I go ahead and hit the whole thing up again with a wet coat to make sure that all the pieces that are visible have a nice smooth glossy finish and to make sure that final coat is nice and uniform. For small pieces like this, I'll start at the same way where I hit the sides. I want to make sure they get a nice even coat. But what I do is after I'm done spraying the center section or the section that's most visible, I'll do a final top coat of just spinning it so that make sure that all the edges blend nicely. Now the process for switching between colors during a paint session is going to be straightforward and the same for whatever type of paints you're using, whether it's lacquer, um, enamels or acrylic. What you're going to do is you're just going to put your thinner into your pot, um, sorry, into your cup give it a good backwash. What you do is you just put your finger over the um, spray nozzle, let some air out and into the pot. It's gonna gurgle like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and just dump that excess out. You're gonna go ahead, wipe up any excess that might be left inside and then spray any parts that's still stuck to the needle or stuck down in the hole out into your pot. 
you're going to continue this process as many times as it needs to be done. But if for some reason it's a little bit stuck or you're having some trouble getting it out, what you can do is you can go ahead and grab a Q-tip and kind of scrub out some of the excess that might be stuck on the edges and whatnot. So give it a scrub. Go ahead, do this process two, three times, and eventually what will happen is that thinner will come out and it'll be kind of perfectly clean. It might be a little bit light and milky, but that's okay. And that's also kind of the reason why you want to go from a light color to a dark color, is that even if there's a little bit of paint left, the dark color should overpower that lighter color. Now at this point, I know it can be really tempting to want to take the pieces and start snapping them up together and everything, but I encourage you guys to wait at least 24 hours so when we come back next week, we could talk about top coats to get that final look that we want and to also protect our pieces from getting chipped or scratched or anything like that. So I know it's tempting, leave it alone, let it cure, and next week we'll go over how to protect our kits properly. So there you have it guys, the way I do a complete paint session from start to finish. Now, if you're still a little overwhelmed and you're not quite ready, go ahead and practice on some more additional pieces, but maybe practice setting yourself up so you can get used to switching between pieces, putting one piece down and moving on to the next one, and just get yourself set up so that when you're finally ready to do so, you set yourself up for success. Anyway, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found some value in this content. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and I'll see you in the next one.